IELTS savings accounts are dead. In this video, I'm going to cover how I'm getting 8.6% APY on my savings and how you can too. IELTS savings rates have been dropping slowly over the years, and that has only been sped up by the Federal Reserve dropping rates down to 0% to help bolster the economy. This has directly impacted the savings rates as banks have had to adjust to the low rates that the Federal Reserve sets. If you've been saving money and been getting the itch to either invest or put your money to work, instead of leaving it in your high yield savings account, then this might be a great option for you. 8.6% APY seems very high, so your first thought must be, how risky is this? The way I'm getting 8.6% APY is not from a traditional bank, but on a platform called BlockFi. Before I heard of them, I was skeptical, so stay to the end of the video to see why I'm comfortable putting more than $10,000 into BlockFi. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're new here, my name is Davis and welcome to my channel. Each week I make new videos on personal finance and wealth building. BlockFi is a lending platform that started in 2017. It allows users to borrow, lend, and purchase cryptocurrency. Before you exit the video after hearing the word cryptocurrency, it's 2021 and the industry has started to mature. This is something you don't want to miss out on. BlockFi also has a high yield interest account that offers some of the most competitive rates. It offers 6% for Bitcoin, 5.25% for Ethereum, and 6.5% for Litecoin, and then 8.6% for stablecoins. Stablecoins are just cryptocurrency that's tied to some other asset, in this case, the US dollar. Since stablecoins are tied to the US dollar, they hardly fluctuate in value. So that means you don't have to worry about massive drops just like you hear in the news with Bitcoin dropping 50 or 70%. That just doesn't happen to stablecoins. Once you open an account with BlockFi, what you would need to do is transfer in your dollars, which will then be deposited as GUSD, which is a stablecoin from Gemini. Gemini is the premier cryptocurrency custodian. Think of them as the Iron Bank from Game of Thrones or Green Guts from Harry Potter. With the 8.6% APY, for every $10,000 you put in, you would get $860 every single year. That's more than 15 times the average high yield savings account. In perspective, the best high yield savings rate currently is around 0.60%, meaning for every $10,000 you put in, you get just $60. That's an $800 difference every single year. BlockFi is currently valued at up to $3 billion, raising funds from SoFi, Coinbase, Peter Thiel's backed Valor Ventures, and then Winklevoss Capital, which is a fund started by the twins from the Facebook origin story. So they're being watched by some of the biggest players in the venture capital game. If you want to get up to $250 in free Bitcoin, check out my link down below where you can sign up for a free BlockFi account. The BlockFi team is not anonymous like some crypto ventures. They currently have 192 employees, and they're led by CEO Zach Prince, and then the co-founder, Flory Marquez. Their chief security officer is Adam Healy. He's had roles from companies such as Bot, Palantir, Microsoft, and then within the Department of Defense. The reason why I highlight Adam is because one of my biggest concerns before using BlockFi was security. However, Adam has extensive experience within security across multiple industries, so that helped ease my mind a bit. BlockFi currently has over 250,000 active users with more than $15 billion in managed assets. This may sound like a lot, but compare that to Chase with 50 million plus accounts, Wells Fargo with 70 plus million accounts, BlockFi is only just beginning. To put it in perspective, Chase has almost as many employees as BlockFi does accounts. After hearing all this, BlockFi seems like a great company. However, how can BlockFi give you 8.6% and then how come your bank can only give you 0.5%? So what's the catch? The reason why they can provide such a high APY is because they can lend out money and then get between 10 and 13% and then they give me and you the difference. If you want my initial thoughts and then early review of using BlockFi after just a couple of months, click the subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss out on that video. When I first heard of BlockFi and I saw the high APY, I asked myself, what are the risks and then how secure is my money? With such a high APY, it's really easy to pull you in. However, let's go over the risks before you open an account. Stay to the end of the video to see why I'm comfortable taking these risks. One of the first things that stood out to me when looking into BlockFi was that they don't have FDIC insurance similar to traditional banks. This might seem like a huge red flag, but hear me out. Give me a few seconds to explain. So if a traditional bank gets hacked and your funds get stolen, you're insured up to $250,000 per person per bank. If BlockFi is hacked and loses money, then you would be out of the funds. However, since its inception, BlockFi hasn't lost any funds and they have a ton of protocols in place to prevent such a thing. The first line of defense is using two-factor authentication. First, you install an app like Google Authenticator, which gives you a six-digit code that's updated every 60 seconds. So the only way to log in is to know your password and then also know the six digit code that changes every minute. The next security measure they have is called digital wallet whitelisting. This means that you can set up a digital wallet that you can withdraw money to. This requires an approval of your ID or photo. 
So if a hacker were actually able to get into your account, then they would need to add on their wallet or some other wallet. However, you need either an ID or a current photo. To... Another huge step that BlockFi takes in security is that they keep all their crypto assets at Gemini, the premier crypto custodian. It's get attacked and hacked all the time. And recently in 2020, BlockFi did get hacked. However, they didn't lose any funds and they addressed it with their customers immediately. Since then, they haven't had any kind of hacking issues. Other risks that you have with BlockFi, or any bank really, is counterparty risk. According to Investopedia, counterparty risk is the likelihood or the probability that those involved in a transaction might default on its contractual obligation. Or, in plain English, the risk is that BlockFi either closes down, they have issues with their funds, or their loans. However, BlockFi is very strong financially. They've been around for four years, they currently have $15 billion in assets under management, with a revenue of $500 million this year alone. And as for their loans, they currently have a vetting and interview process for all their institution and individual loans. That 8.6% APY is mind-blowing. It beats the average return of a stock market. However, there's one more risk that you need to be mindful of before you open an account. The last risk that you should be aware of is BlockFi borrowers defaulting on their loans due to a massive crash in crypto prices. So BlockFi will loan institutions or individuals money based on the crypto that they deposit. For example, someone with one Bitcoin deposited on BlockFi can get a loan for around $30,000. Knowing that Bitcoin is very volatile, what happens to the loan in the event that Bitcoin drops 50%? In the original loan terms, BlockFi is very conservative and makes borrowers over collateralized, meaning they have to put up two times what they're going to borrow. In the event that the Bitcoin or whatever crypto was deposited for the loan drops by 50%, then the borrower has the opportunity to provide more collateral before being liquidated or cashed out. This basically ensures that the loan will be 100% covered and then prevents any kind of impact to customers like you and me. As you can see, BlockFi takes a very conservative approach for their lending, so that decreases the chances of any kind of issues coming up with their loans. In the event of a black swan event where crypto dives between 50 and 70%, BlockFi has actually recently experienced this in the March of 2020. During this huge crash, they were able to handle it incredibly well. They had zero losses. They did not liquidate a USD loan below a price of $4,500, despite the market prices reaching a low of $3,800. As a result, the team's prudent actions during this period, their client's capital was saved, and they also liquidated a smaller percentage, less than 10% of their overall USD loan book versus other market participants. They were well prepared and handled a massive crash very smoothly. So you can see that they are battle tested and they were able to execute with zero losses during an incredibly volatile time in the crypto markets. Now that you know what BlockFi is, what their risks are, and then how they handle them, let's go over what I'm doing and why. This year, I decided to take more risk and want to put my money to work. Therefore, I'm depositing $15,000 into BlockFi, which is a significant amount of my savings with plans to add more in the future. With the 8.6% APY, I'll be getting $1,290 per year or $107 in passive income each month. Again, if you're interested in signing up for a free BlockFi account where you can get up to $250 in free Bitcoin, check out my link down below. For reference, this bucket of money is my lower risk money, so it would normally be sitting in my Ally High Yield Savings account, which would be rotting away at 0.50%. I would only be getting about $75 as compared to over $1,200 within BlockFi. A few reasons why I decided to take a risk and open up an account with BlockFi is that federal rates are going to be around 0% over the next few years and I don't want my money sitting around doing nothing. I want to put my money to work, but I don't want to put it directly into other cryptocurrencies or in the volatile stock market. Don't get me wrong, I still have a bucket of money specifically for stock investing and then investing directly into cryptocurrencies. This is just my conservative like emergency fund or savings for money I don't really touch. If you're still shopping around for a high yield savings account and you want something less risky and at a more traditional bank, check out my video review on Ally Bank to see if it's still worth it. Ally Bank is a huge bank and offers one of the highest high yield savings rate at 0.50%. I'll link it up above and then down below. So we went over all the risks of BlockFi where they're not insured, potential counterparty risks, defaulting. Despite all those risks, there's a few reasons why I trust them. The first reason is they're a public facing team with huge venture capital backing, so the chances that they disappear and they do a rug pull on their customers is very slim. I'm not worried about BlockFi closing down or disappearing because they're in a very strong financial situation and then they're also generating over $500 million in revenue and growing. I'm also not too worried about them getting hacked because they have a ton of security protocols in place, they have a strong security team with Adam Healy leading the way. Another reason why I trust them is because their CEO has more than $500,000 of his own money within BlockFi. 
With crypto being so volatile, the last reason why I trust BlockFi is that they were able to handle a crypto market crash very smoothly. This gives me confidence that they'll be able to handle any kind of upcoming market volatility. We're so used to traditional banks giving us horribly low rates that 8.6% APY seems way too good to be true. However, I believe these are new times and then the current market allows for people like me and you to get 8.6% APY on our money and this is an opportunity that I want to take full advantage of. As always, this video is for entertainment purposes only. I'm not a financial advisor, so do your own due diligence before you open an account. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week.